going to be in a really bad mood. <laughs> So as the spider wrangler, I uh, take care of all the live animals, make sure they have food, water, and also do the milking them. And today you did a fantastic demonstration, giving us a very beautiful up close view of the fangs of the particular spider. Well done. Thank you. Uh, and I guess, help me to understand, is it milking? Is that the, the appropriate term to use yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. Use, or, or venom extraction. Method. Venom so, extraction. Oh, okay. So maybe more professional. <laughs> and the idea here was to um, induce the spider to release its venom. Yeah. Under control. Exactly. You, you relax the spider or put it to sleep so it doesn't struggle. Uh, because they do try to escape. Uh, Naturally, yes. Yeah, they don't like us, you know, they just want to be left alone, really. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the idea is to trigger the muscles controlling the venom gland to, to release the venom through the venom. The fans, and that's why I was trying to tap with electrical current on the place where the muscles are loaded. And we did get some venom, yeah. but it's really hard to predict. Sometimes we don't get anything, sure. Um, sometimes you get a lot. Depends on the spider, really, not us. I, I imagine it's not like cows where the, the udders are really full until you no. can kind of tell when somebody's. And they do use it for prey and uh, in defense. Sometimes we don't know, like I said, we don't know the history of the spider. Sometimes they come to us with depleted venom uh, glands and we have to feed them and uh, put them in recovery. Right. Um, but we should be clear that this was about just inconveniencing the spider. The, the spider did not come to any harm. It's, it's not harming the spider. Uh, no. And that's why we put them to sleep. Um, they don't really feel anything. Um, I would compare it that the electrical the trigger that we use is comparable to a reflex exam. You know, you hit the knee, it doesn't cause any harm, but it triggers a, a, a response. So that's exactly what you're doing. And that, that's what you're doing, is just getting that reflex response exactly. that releases the venom. Uh, I would imagine that we saw lots of pins there, but that's more about holding the spider that's down. Secure, that's for the safety of the spider, not us. Right. It's just holding it in place so well, we... You can imagine have people have seen, yes. you know, pinning of butterflies and things yeah. like that. That's not the same. Yeah. I don't think it's the spider. It, the fins go around the spider's body, so <laughs> it's safe. And in terms of the electrical current, I'm guessing it's very low current. Very low output. Like a household battery kind of. Even less than even, that. Even less than that, right. So it's One not... Volt, something like that. Okay. And what species of spider were you working with today? Today it was a fishing spider. Fishing? Uh, so uh, some people know them as dog spiders. Yes. Rest of the dogs. Uh, Fish or amphibians coming out of the water. Okay. Uh, we will also be working with tarantulas and huntsman spiders, which oh. are more active predators. Uh, Very exciting. Their prey. There were gasps when you mentioned the fishing spider because I think some people didn't realize that spiders actually include fish among their prey. That, that this, yeah. this beautiful creature you had in your hands here actually fishes for spiders. Yeah, that's a very unique. Uh, uh, Characteristic for these spiders that they can they can fish. they can also walk on water so they're very they're very uh, lightweight they have uh, hairs on their feet that allow them to walk on the surface water thanks without, to surface tension exactly without submerging and sinking uh, but many spiders feed on vertebrates right they they're generalist predators they will go for whatever they they can get uh, usually it's invertebrates insects uh, but sure spiders feed on lizards they, they, Geckos, wow. some big tarantulas will feed on mice. <laughs> yeah, whatever works. Right? And I guess part of that, you're showing off this cool demonstration about venom. So that is what allows spiders of this size to be able to tackle something much bigger. That depends on the spiders. So some of them, uh, the, in some of them, the venom is pretty weak, um, but it's the force of the fangs that sometimes paralyzes the prey. Right. Uh, but yeah, definitely the venom is there to paralyze prey and. and to allow the spider to kill and, and consume its... Uh, and we should mention that, you know, the ability of spiders like this to be able to walk on water, that's surface tension. And yes. so when you have environmental concerns, people talk about shampoos and oils, they get released into the water. That breaks that surface tension. Definitely Suddenly, interfere. Our, our friendly little fishing spider starts to sink yeah, and he can't exactly. perform that. Polluted water is definitely a problem, but it's also a problem for the fish. Yeah. So the fish might not even be there. 
Okay. For the spiders and cats. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of those, you know, factors and, and things to consider when you're talking about the, the bigger pictures, uh, the bigger picture in the environment and environmental issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you have a beautiful controlled observation laboratory here. Uh, how dangerous was the venom you were working with here today? Is it, is it a medically significant spider? That's a good question. So, for, as far as we know, these spiders are harmless. Um, the venom, they're not potent uh, spiders. Uh, but like I mentioned, some components of the venom, we just don't know. Right. It's not fatal. I mean, it's it's not like if I, if I was to get bitten, nothing really happened. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, some of these components some of these compounds are unknown um, in what they do, so we need to analyze them, um, see if we can use them for medical purposes or other purposes. All right. Have you been bitten by a not in a lab setting? So because I've yeah, I've, well, not a fish spider. Okay. But I've been doing a lot of field field work, so uh -huh. yeah, you do get bitten by tarantulas and wolf spiders and I've been by scorpions. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, people think it's well, you get stung or bitten and that's the end of the world. But you know what? It's it's actually not that bad. Oh, okay. It makes you sick a little bit for like a couple of hours, sometimes four hours, but that's it. I've read on pet forums because some people do keep trying oh, yeah. as pets. These guys like, get bitten a lot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm surprised that they keep coming back for more, as it yeah. seems. But I, there have been people uh, offering accounts of like suddenly they lose feeling in their left arm for a day or two. Yeah. Uh, because it isn't just the pain of the bite, but it is a neurologically, or in some cases, neurotoxins. neurotoxins. So sometimes, yeah, they will uh, affect your, your muscle activity. So yeah, you will lose the you know, feeling, or you, you get a feeling of numbness <laughs> for a while, but it, it goes away. Yeah. Uh, and again, it, it really depends on the spider. Um, some spiders are more potent than others. Uh, and so and you shouldn't keep hot species anyway as pets. I mean, the no. big, uh, you know, the, the big and bad, the of big all, and the worst. Of all the little animals to keep as pets, perhaps tarantulas are not the... the tarantulas best. are actually quite tame. Uh, they're generally slow spiders. Okay. There are some fat species, um, but regarding to venom, the venom is pretty weak. There yeah. are some old world species that live in India and Africa that have potent venom. Yeah. Um, it's part of their defense mechanism, yeah. not necessarily for the prey. Um, Which but is for mostly things that may be playing with them. Yeah, but tarantulas, they keep to themselves. No spider is out to get you. That's important. They're right. not interested in us. They're interested in surviving, getting their food. Uh, so no spider will charge at you in order to bite you. That's, that's something that we maybe need to stress. Well, those fangs were pretty impressive. Like, I know today, you know, the idea was to milk them for the venom, but also yeah. to give a view to the people watching of just exactly the fangs that everybody's afraid of, just what exactly they look like. And they are impressive in terms of that black kind of hooked, you know, we think of teeth, but no, it's much more of a, a beak like. Think of it as an injection. It's more like a syringe. So it's a it's a hollow fang. It's connected to the venom gland, and yeah, and the venom flows all through the fang, and there's a, a tiny hole at the tip. Um, so it is an injection mechanism, really, more yeah. than a tooth. Uh, but they will. The spiders will also use it to massage their prey. So after the venom takes effect, oh, okay. they cannot take. Uh, spiders cannot take in chunks of food. No. So they will massage the prey to make it softer and more um, you know, suitable for, for uh, digesting. Yeah, even if they wanted to, they've got filters that exactly. they don't take solids they don't, from being mixed exactly. in. They, what you're left after the you know, spider finishes feeding, which is like something like you know, all of, of remains, and, and that's it. And they're all tightly packed. And like it doesn't really look like an insect, it just looks like this. this uh, like those cars dried, that get smashed yeah, up and like a dried uh, packet. Now you gave a nice little introduction about the difference between venom and poison. And poison, yeah. uh, poison is the one you don't drink. Yes. But venom in some places at bars they do snake venom shots that you, you could drink. I'm, I'm guessing not, that. that's not the case no, here. I, no, absolutely you wouldn't be not. able to, I mean that would I mean be anyone true. would like to try and become Spider Man, but sure. that's, uh, again, well, that's no not radiation like, here today. Yeah, no. But in any way that's not drinking venom. Right. Uh, but I guess but we don't do that. <laughs> no. So I guess my point is that when we call it venom, though, is it equivalent to snake venom? Would it be something if you had enough? Would it's it be safe to drink? You're not. 
It's not being injected. Yeah, you can drink it. I mean, I wouldn't think that would be unwise. Yeah, would be no, there's, there's no reason to do it. I mean, we can't digest it anyway. Gotcha. These are toxins. Um, but it's equivalent to snake venom, bee venom, wasp venom. Um, but the, it, the, 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 the whole mix or compound might be different. So some, in spiders, you have more neurotoxins and other animal snakes, it's more hem hemotoxins to clot blood. Um, so, yeah, the, the components are different, but the, the function is the same. So as a weapon, it's more about injection. This is much like having a hypodermic needle put Absolutely. into you. It's to be able to get yeah. it into your blood system. And it can, the significance of why you're doing this, the scientific value here, yeah. is because of that neurotoxin, that neurological value, there is research that can be done with this. Absolutely. Weapon. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of these components we don't know uh, what, they're, what they're, we don't even know what the spiders are using it for. So there's a lot of of we, venturing into the right. unknown, um, figuring out the structure of these compounds, whether they have potential uh, to be used as the next treatment drug or painkiller. A lot of those neurotoxins are used as painkillers in, in surgery or uh, medicinal activities. So, well, that would be interesting to wake up from surgery. Very important surgery and to, to realize that yeah, maybe, uh, the maybe, spider played maybe, a little role and helped exactly, you out. Maybe, maybe it was a black, you know, black widow uh, venom, <laughs> you never know. Well, thank you very much, Gil. Yeah. It was a pleasure watching you work. Well, thank you for having me.